hold on. Here we go. <laughs> All right, folks, here we are live on the metal voice, the metal panel. Uh, yeah. One day early. Usually we do this on a Sunday, but Hey, you know what? We're busy on Sunday. We're going to do it on Saturday. We're having brunch With us today. tomorrow. Yeah, they're, they're, they're having metal voice brunch. <laughs> Why? 10 a.m. Why? Why? Well, it's a Saturday. I'm so, Saturday. We're supposed to be. That's how much I love you guys. You know how hard it is. You know how hard it is for me to get up at 10 a.m. on a Saturday. We're doing you a favor, Tom. That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're, we're think of like, all it's, you're going to like... accomplish today. Think of all yeah. you're going to accomplish today, Tom. I'm going to yeah, lay on yeah. my couch and play Skyrim and probably go back to sleep. <laughs> Oh, it's it's 8 a.m. It's 8 a.m. here, and I'm in Megadeth, Arizona. It's 8 a.m. here, so remember that. All right, so from the four corners of North America, Montreal, Arizona, and where are you now? Green Bay? Yeah. Oh, where are you? In the middle of nowhere outside of Green Bay. Green Bay adjacent. All right. The capital uh, of actually, American football. That's right, the Green Bay Packers. The only football league where it's the People's Football League, correct? Yeah, we technically we own the team. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me a sec. I'm just gonna put this. I just want to share it to a few places and we'll get started. So talk amongst yourselves, fellas. <laughs> All right, here we are. Wow, hi, Jack, we hi, Jack, hi, Jack Mangan. How are you? Good, man. It's good talking to you. It's been a while. Good. Yeah, I, I got your message the other day. I was like it literally in the middle of like uh I was in the middle of getting a car, so everything was super hectic, so that's why I couldn't really chat. But I was going to oh, yeah. have it back and have it. People oh, of the world, Megadeth's new album was released yesterday. The Sick, the Dying, uh, the, and the Dead. Is that it? The Sick, the Dying, and the Dead. I get confused sometimes. Which I hate that title. You do? I'm not really a big fan of it. I mean, I do it ever. It's fine, but I don't right. know. Right off the bat, Tom's already pissed <laughs> off about the album. You no. keep in mind, here's the thing. Um, I, I was... I was one like, against no, yeah. title I, no good I, I was very adjacent to the making of this album obviously that was when i was still in the megadeth orbit so mm -hmm. i mean i, I remember and maybe somebody else got in my head because somebody else didn't like that title and so maybe that but i don't know I, was, I just never i don't know i thought dystopia was like the perfect album the perfect title the per perfect imaging everything about it was so fresh and so cool and now it just kind of feels like they recycled it's the same vic rattlehead it's oh yeah no, 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 no. let's we'll get into that we'll get into that oh, we'll get into that yesterday oh, was released the new yeah, album was released. Early, wind up up. <laughs> yeah. he's like cranky i think this is just a crease of crankiness right <laughs> all right jack jack megan all the way in arizona tom in green bay me and Perrin in Montreal. Actually, he's in Laval, south, uh, north of Montreal. All right, today on the show, I, I did a poll before we started, and I'm just going to give you preliminary numbers uh, of the fans, the metal fed, metalhead fans, their thoughts on this new album. 70 to 75% of these fans said that 8 and out of 10 plus. So they thought the album was 8 out of 10 and more than that. That's 70 to 75%. And of course, the difference said, seven out of 10. So 20, uh, 25 to 30 said it's below seven out of 10. All right. All around the, all around the table. Let's just talk about these topics. Okay. But quickly, we're, don't go into the songs. Don't go into the album. What do you think Tom about the production? I think it sounds great. I mean, their production is pretty top notch. I mean, it's always good. You know? Yeah. I think the production is great. I mean, they spent long enough making the record, so I hope it's good. All right, Compare, com and Jack, what'd you think compared to the last album, Dystopia, this production versus Dystopia? Just production, uh, I think they're both really solid sounding albums, but I think if, you know, if I had to say which one's better, I would go with this one. Just production, yeah, just I'd say All this right. is the better sounding one. Perrin, production. Now we're not going into songs right now, we're not going to do the history of Megadeth, <laughs> just simply the production, comparing it to the last few albums. It sounds what I expect the Megadeth album to sound like in 2022. So, you know, I, I think all these bands kind of, you know, we talk about Maiden should deviate from Kevin Shirley and this band should do this and this band should do that. You know, I, I think some of these bands that we love have settled into the way they sound. And this is just the way Megadeth sounds in 2022. I don't think it's better than Dystopia. I don't think it's worse than Dystopia. It's just what I expect Megadeth to sound like. So production right. wise, there's no controversy in my mind. Okay, so Killing Is My Business, uh, uh, much better than that production. That's what we're saying, right? <laughs> fair. Like fair enough. Like, it's, like, it's, 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 it's a different production, and it's a different time, and records sound different. I mean, you know, Peace Cell sounds like it does because of when it 
Randy Burns and when it was recorded and how it was recorded. You know what I mean? And now it's 2021. Like you couldn't, it would be hard to make a record that sounds like Peace Cells now. You know, it's just a different time and different technology and things are done different and filtered I, through I, different, I, I ha- different I have to say, I would have to say, you know, in the last 10 to 15 years, this production is rock solid. I think it's one of their best. Yeah, Jack, yeah. let's talk about yeah. vocals. All right. Comparing, what, what, what's, what's your take on the vocals, your impression on the vocals overall? Um, you know, I think uh, I'm going to copy what parent, I'm going to copy from parents paper. I think he's settled in to this kind of vocal attack. I, I liked him when he was younger and couldn't sing as well. I was a little bit more like the P-Cells era and so far so good era. I think that's so my you're, favorite. So you're saying he can sing now? So you're saying it's, he, you do think he's singing better on this album? Like, I think like he's, he's more, he's more talented as a vocalist now, but uh, I don't, I don't like it as much. I think he's, um. He's gone, and, and and it's not. That's not to say that he's singing opera. He's not ready to, to sing for uh, you know for for Nightwish. But I think he's. Um, I, I preferred younger, screamier, kind of growlier Dave. When he knew he couldn't sing, and he didn't even try when he did more of his growls, like the Conjuring, like you know that kind of stuff. I think I'm right. more comfortable with the old stuff. All right, Perrin, stuff. let's compare the vocals off of this album to Dystopia, or the last two albums yeah. for that matter. Uh, look. Dave is the singer of the band, but I don't really consider him a vocalist. I mean, I think Dave is almost a spoken word artist. You know, he's almost like speaking over music more than he is singing, I would say. So, you know, I I have Dave's voice, I think, as we all know, is an acquired taste. and, And for a lot of people, it might be what turns them off from Megadeth. For other people, it's what's interesting or different about them. Look, if you put a gun to my head, I'd say his vocals are my least favorite part of the album. Uh, and, and we'll get into other parts of the performance after, but it just, it sounds like Dave. I, I feel there's a few songs where he's really struggling and I, and I really don't like them. I think sacrifice the, is one of the songs. In particular. You're getting into the songs. Oh, yeah, there's a few song. songs <laughs> where man, he's really like, like, like kind of Jack insinuated. Someone needs to tell Dave that he really can't sing, you know? And then, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're way past that point, Tom, yeah, just, just speak <laughs> so, from a vocalist perspective. I, I mean, I, I, I think, first off, I think Dave Mustaine is pretty aware that he can't sing. You know, this is one thing I'll say, and I was thinking about this last night. We were thinking we were talking about, you know, one thing that, you know, Megadeth has over Metallica, Dave Mustaine just sounds like Dave Mustaine. Like, Metallica lost the formula. Like, Metallica, they wanted to sound like Metallica, couldn't. You know, if you gave them $80 billion, first off, they'd say, well, I already have $80 billion. I don't need it. (laughs) Second... (laughs) That can, they couldn't do it. Like Mustaine still sat for, for being 40 years older and going through cancer. He still sounds like Mustaine. I think lyrically. He's no, we're not going to get into lyrics soon. Just well, the vocals, the yeah, melodies well, right now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think lyrically he struggles a little bit more, but vocally, I, I think he sounds good. I think he sounds like him. That's one thing about Megadeth. That's why I can still listen to a new Megadeth record because he still sounds like Dave Mustaine, you know, for better or for worse. He still sounds like Dave Mustaine. I think he tried singing a little bit on Risk and some of the albums, and it was kind of that was him singing. You know, I think he's kind of given that up, thankfully. Yeah, and I would uh, say that you know he's got a distinct tone, and it separates Megadeth from everyone else. And people absolutely. know when you play a Megadeth song, that's Megadeth. Yeah, and he his vocal melodies and his voice and his tonality fits the music that yeah. he's creating. Okay, and, and he's writing say- the music with his voice in his head. That's yep. what I'm trying to say. And you, and you can say he's not really a singer, but I, I, you know, as a guy who toured the world, basically having to sing like him for years, like it's not easy to do, man. It's a weird, niche thing. It is. He is like a spoken word artist almost. He, you yeah. know, I mean, it's- all right. Now let's get into lyrics. All right, Jack. When I'm I, I reading a lot of comments online and people are saying, oh my God, these are cringe lyrics. This is cheesy. Yeah. What on earth is Dave doing here? Jack, what are your first impressions overall, not song by song, of the lyrics? All right. All right. Well, thanks for inviting me to this minefield and letting me walk through <laughs> this minefield. But uh, yeah, I, it, they are, there's definitely some cringe. Um, there's a little bit of like military fetishism going on. Like, uh, I don't know what he's, what, but Dave has always had, I mean, come on, Peace Cells is kind of yeah. goofy. And I'm, you know, don't send me a hate mail. I love Peace Cells. But I already did. I'm composing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> all right thanks well tommy you, can, you send me hate mail all the time but yeah um, that's but just yeah. speaking for you it's like you know right right just like like fuck you jack yeah like i get it but no so, I, what, you're, so what you're saying is he's 
He's more cringy than mechanics or less cringy than mechanics. And, and there's nothing more cringy than mechanics. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. that's right. Right. There's he he I mean, topped the, out the cringe meter like in 1984. So, but his yeah. sense of humor is still kind of the same. I mean, he's still that's kind it. of there. Like in the, in the new lyrics on this new, the lyrics of Dave in 2022, it's kind of like, come on, come on, Dave, like grow a little, um, you know, no offense, Dave, I love you. But I mean, you know, it's it. So yeah, I'm not, I'm, the thumbs down. I mean, I'll keep it succinct. Some thumbs down on right. the lyrics for me. Baron lyrics. Tell me overall impressions on the lyrics. Yeah, you know, I think the themes are interesting, but the lyrics themselves in a couple of instances are kind of juvenile but it's back to like the voice thing it just is what it is at this point like i'm not really expecting him to uh you know quote poetry like steve harris or whatever and, and, and give us rhyme of the ancient mariner or, or something you know it's like that's not gonna happen so the themes are interesting the lyrics are a little juvenile uh like i said i think dave's performance unfortunately is the low point of the album vocally and l- writing lyrics <laughs> And we'll get to the high points. I'm assuming next in your next. Yeah. yeah. So Tom, Tom, you know you write lyrics too. I mean, what I do you do. think? I mean, I mean, has his lyrics improved? Have they gotten down? Have they uh, gotten worse? I should say. It, it, uh, over- it, it, yeah. You know, here's the thing. I, I mean, I you know, again, I, 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 it's so funny. I feel like Dystopia was like this perfect, almost classic era Megadeth record. So for me, the bar was set. So here's one thing I've always said about Mustaine. Though. Obviously. Mustaine's a very Trumpy right wing guy. And, and I always said this in his lyrics, he always kind of stayed in the middle. He'd write things that could be interpreted both ways. Like you wouldn't hear, you know, that that's a good lyricist, right? That's a yeah, good lyricist. And that's it. And I, I think he kind of lost a little of that on this record. He's kind of veering a little right where it's harder to, but yeah, that's one thing that was always, I'd always say this to Ellison is one thing about Mustaine is he could stay neutral, even though he was politically very right wing, he could write something that was right wing, but you could interpret it either way. You know what I mean? But I, you know, but, but I think, I think his concept, I think he's just getting a little too in his right wing sort of, you know, thing, which, which is, which is again, the military fetishism and all this stuff, but He's always written sort of from that perspective. So it's hard. Now that I know his politics, it's like now I can kind of hear it in there. But I guess when I was 14, I didn't. So I mean, but like, I think his lyric, I mean, yeah, there's some really cringy shit on it. And as a lyric guy, that's the first thing for me. If a, a lyrics on an album don't do it for me, I'm like, ugh. But I, like, it's about half and half. I mean, there's some brilliant shit on this record. I mean, there's some of those mag- those Mustaineisms and those really clever euphemisms and, you know, but, but again, there's some, some I, I, I'll crazy. tell you, I, I really enjoy his lyrics and because they're simple and yeah. uh, he, there's wit and there's humor and yeah. you have to get his humor. There's, there's so much humor going on there and people take him too serious, but then there's a serious side of him. Yeah. You know, the military fetish, yeah. like Jack saying, right. It's there, but that's the kind of music that fits. Right. Uh, okay. It's, now, it's, now let's get into the Jack. I want you to talk about quickly about, overall your impressions of the bass the guitar and the drums i love the uh, drums are drums actually the first thing i'm going to talk on because the drums really stood out for me on this record um guitar, much guitar. more than anything in a long time i think from uh from megadeth and i'll also i'll say guitar dave is actually dave mustaine is one of my favorite guitar players um not because he's like a billion notes per second but because he kind of takes his time you hear every note and he's just always like the, the i'll go back to again the conjuring or um uh, you know, Holy Wars, you know, that is so his solos. I can always tell his when they come on, or even Hangar 18, of course, is a famous solo song. Just, he's just fantastic. I love the, his phrasing and just love the way he, he kind of talks with his guitar. And I feel like I'm, that Dave has not been there as much in the 21st century albums. And I, I just love the way he sounds on this record. It sounds like he's just supercharged. Um, the bass sounds really good on this record too. I'm, you know, of course, this is another interesting topic. I'm curious to know what it would have sounded like had they gone with uh, their their original guy, but uh, awesome. <laughs> it, it, it sounded, I, I heard, I heard some of it. I heard some of it in progress. It sounded good. I mean, I mean, it definitely sounds different. I mean, I'm probably the only person on earth who can actually speak to this, but you know, I mean, it sound it sounds good. I mean, I mean, Giorgio has got a totally different style and a totally different tone. 
it sounds a little darker with him. It sounds a little deep, but it, it sounded great with Allison. I mean, it did. It sounded great. I mean, it, it, you know, Dave playing this. What, was the, it note for note that they, they, they redone? Is that, or it was just different sort of bass lines or you, you couldn't tell or you couldn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, to honest, I didn't have the album to sit and scrutinize it with the old bass parts, but, you know, I'd heard some of it in parts of it. But, but I would me. think Mustaine, no matter who's playing bass, is still going to be telling that person, here's how you need to be playing it. Now, of course, Dave Elfson right. and Steve DiGiorgio are different people. Yeah. But but I still would think there's some direction being given there in terms of how yeah. the song needs to be. I yeah, think so I, that too. Yeah. I think probably a little more general direction. I look, I think Mustaine's a little older where he understands he's surrounded by people who know how to play. So I don't think it's as much of him dictating, okay, this is how you need to play it. It's not like when they were making peace cells, you know what I mean? So I, I think there's a little more freedom. I, I mean, I think some of the parts definitely changed some with the Giorgio from my recollection. But I, again, I think the biggest difference is me are tonally and just how, he, you know, he plays. And I mean, look, it sounded, sounded good with Ellison. It sounded like Ellison. This doesn't. But, you know, again, this to me, again, kind of sounds like the Megadeth record. You know, Ellison has a very distinct playing style. And it was cool hearing him play with Dirk and some of the Dirk blasts and some of the different twists and turns musically on this record, you know. But yeah, that is definitely a definitely a different record with Giorgio on it for sure. All right. Before Perrin, you answer drums, bass, and guitar. I'm just gonna read some comments. Scott is saying I love the sound on the album in general, really crisp and clear. I agree with that. Tommy's saying Dave sounds and looks healthy. Love the new album. Kevin's saying, I think. The sound is the real high point on the album. I would agree. I think this is one yeah, of their yeah. best productions they've ever done. And I was watching this YouTube video of a guy who was like really criticizing the production. I'm like, what planet are you on? Hey, what album are you listening yeah, to? Like, but that's a person what, who just maybe really likes one. He, he's kind of probably thing. listening yeah. to Frequency. That Frequency that's is wrong. That favorite, Frequency is wrong. That's the guy whose favorite band is like Epica or something. Where everything. <laughs> no. Look at. Um, uh, wait a moment. What? What do you, and here's a guy who says, Trong says, what do you guys think about Pink Floyd? I think you're on the wrong podcast, buddy. <laughs> no, I have no opinion. <laughs> Robert saying, new CD is killer. Uh, artist saying, Dave vocals are unique. When you hear his voice, you know it's Dave. I would agree. When you hear Brian Johnson, you know it's ACDC. Absolutely. Yeah. Kevin saying, the charm of his voice in the early days. The new album is sick. I love it, says Scott. Hey, guys. The Taylor Hawkins tribute gig is on in 15 minutes. I guess we missed it. I guess that's, uh, that's, that's why I got up today. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the highlights will be available nowhere when it's all done. I mean, yeah. All right, Perrin. Perrin, tell us quickly. You know, before uh, we get into each song, let's go to uh, the, the drums bass. And yeah, so, so I, I really want to say that for me, the musical performances make this record. Yeah. For me, is what, what takes this record to another plane are the, the musical performances of Kiko, Dirk, and I guess Steve DiGiorgio. I'm, I'm so blown away by this. I'm really glad that this band, and now, you know, I'm, I'm, and Dirk and Kiko have been with Mustaine for a good while now. I'm glad that we got this performance out there recorded uh, and noted, because honestly, in, in terms of a unit, a recording unit, this might be my favorite, uh, like a top three Megadeth performance for me. I mean, I love Menza and Marty Friedman, Obviously, you got to love Gar Samuelson and Chris Poland, but for me, this is right up there. I mean, I'm so impressed by what Kiko and Dirk in particular, and then I guess Steve DiGiorgio coming into it later, brought. Playing the right thing in the right song, just little intonations and mood things, uh, you know, listening to this kind of even the second, third time. Uh, I, I was really listening to Dogs of Chernobyl a little bit before, and I just love some of the stuff Kiko was doing in there. It almost sounds, about songs here again. I about about, songs? It almost sounds a little <laughs> rough, but I mean, see, that's it, why I have to always tell him, Jack. I always tell but, him. But sometimes a player him. could just do a little something with each song that just gives it its own little nuance. So it was heavy and slamming. <laughs> Perrin, 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 I was reading this review by a major magazine online, and they go, and the reviewer, I'm reading, and I go, what? 
he goes and he ends off with Megadeth was never known to have many nuances in their music. And I'm like, well, then, then, then that, this is like a major I mean, magazine. Those people I go, who work for major well, publications. People who work for major magazines don't know their right. head from their ass. Right. And I, I won't mean, name the magazine. No, I can't even no. believe he said those that. If you watch it, you know, one cursory listen, about. you know, they give yeah. it one cursory listen and they don't listen to it again. And if you want to look for nuance, you're not going to get that in one listen. You got to kind of get familiar with the songs and hear them. But Megadeth were never known to be Megadeth a band with many nuances. About nuance. <laughs> like, like, really? that's, that's, that's Megadeth. That's who they are. You have this guy who listened to it once and he said, oh. Yeah. So that's blown away, blown away by the music. <laughs> blown away by the music. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All my right. Turn. My turn. No, I get to have that. You went anyway. on your turn. You had your no, turn no, already. No, I didn't. I talked about Ellison for 10 minutes because that's All what right, you guys were going to talk about. Right. I want to talk about the guys I love. Only Dirk, here Kiko. on this show will so, you get the real deal. Go ahead. Yeah. So I did. I, I love Dirk and Kiko, man. And I'm so, here's the thing. Like, I feel like everything from like the world needs a hero to dystopia, all that, like, it was just Dave Mustaine albums. Like, I feel like Megadeth is a band again. I feel like Dirk and Kiko. I feel like this is, again, Chris Poland. Gar Samuelson, Marty Friedman, Nick Menza, Dirk and Kiko. I feel like it's a real band now. They've gelled. They wrote a record together. They rehearsed it together. I think, you know, Dirk and Kiko are just two of the most fabulous people and musicians on earth. And just hearing them together, it, it, I was really happy to hear a record with Dirk, man. I mean, I loved, you know, the playing on Dystopia, but I think Dirk really took it to another level. And that's, to me, Dirk and Kiko, I mean, look, Mustaine's great and his playing's great and everything he does is great. He's Mustaine. We don't even need to praise him anymore. But Dirk and Kiko, man, I mean, they're just a fucking machine. And I think they really set the bar with this record, man. I, I, I really I, I agree with you, Tom. I agree with you. You know, what I do is I on my first listens, and then people know this about me, I listen to the songs as songs. And then I start taking them apart by, you know, chord progressions and and that's why I was asking about the tempo change because I couldn't even figure out what the frig was at a three, four, a six, eight. I'm just trying to figure out these little things that no one cares about, but I do. And 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 just right. when you start taking it apart that way, you start saying, What a bad, a lot of nuances. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, here we go. Um the first song. We'll go around and let's not just because there's like 10 tracks here, let's not spend like 10 minutes each on each song. Let's just quickly. I mean 14 Jack, on just, my version. Okay, with the bonus tracks. Mm -hmm. Uh, the sick, the dying, and the dead. Jack, what'd you think? The uh, well, there you go with the, the humor in the intro. You know, it kind of takes me back to set, I don't want to set the world afire. You know, that's Dave, you know, bringing the bring out your dad. Like, that's that's kind of a classic Mustaine little jokey intro. Uh, I think this, the first song is killer, although it's spoiler alert for me. I think like the first five tracks are all pretty killer. Okay, Jack, you're jumping ahead. Let's just go into the first <laughs> song, please. <laughs> Um, so, all right. So, yeah, the first song, I think... Um, this is not Metal Asylum here. You know, there's strict rules. There's protocols. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Jimmy, Jimmy Ryan's a tight shit. <laughs> yeah, so overanalyze everything. Those are the protocols. <laughs> Go ahead, <laughs> Jack. Protocol. Um, well, the, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to take it to a Metal Asylum kind of level. Uh, no, I'm, no, it's, <laughs> and uh, by the way, Jack is on Metal Asylum. Check him out. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, no, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually just going to say I think I dig the song um, lyrically. It's kind of, it's, it's Dave lyrics because it pulls me in a little bit. I'm like, what what the hell is he talking about? So and then, so that's mission accomplished, right? Whether you like it or not, I think it keeps you interested. But I think this is this is the song. It's, it's a good wake up call. It's a good intro to the album. And it really kind of made me sit and take notice. Because as I said, I'm not throwing shade. I guess I am a little bit. I've not, none of the recent Megadeth albums, not even Dystopia Tom, have really held my interest. I listen and kind of just, my, I start to fade. Oh, then you're wrong, sir. You're wrong. <laughs> You're up too you early, man. Yeah, so that's it. That's my take. Is that it? All uh, right, Perrin. The yeah. sick, the dying, and the dead. The first track, not the I tenth track, not the eighth track, not the seventh track. The first track. I think it's a great first track. I think it's. I saw now. Let me say. I think it's a great first track. It's not my favorite on the record. It's probably only my fourth or fifth favorite on the record. But I think it's a great track to introduce the record. And I think a lot of bands these days do a bad job of that. That the first song, which really needs to set the tone and tell you what the record is about doesn't necessarily do that in every case and i think it really does set the table nicely for the record gives you a sense kind of thematically lyrically musically what we're about to kind of delve into so it's not my favorite but it's a good kind of crack door open 
makes me want to kind of explore this more. So I did, did you like did you like that his little phrasing of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that little part there? That, that, I, that's a I, nuance. I like the song. Yeah. I like the little nursery rhyme thing. But like I said, I think there's I think there's it's good, but I think there's higher highs on the record. Yeah, and, and you know, Megadeth is not a band known. To Tom, me. it's your turn. Go ahead. I, I mean, look, I, I think <laughs> I, I think pacing is really important. You know, it's a really yes. important part of a record. And I, yes. I think it is. I think it's a good first track. It kicks off the record good. I don't really analyze shit the way you guys do. You know what I mean? But I, 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 I agree. It's a good first kind of out of the gate. You know, that's the pace for the record. Yeah, yeah. It is about the Black Plague and how it sort of, you know, it, you know, it attacked the virus sort of went across Europe and uh, you know, and they talk about uh, Sicily or Italy and uh, yeah, it's, it's got a good theme, some great lyrics and Holy crap. I love this song and I love the ending, you know, it just sort of uh, repeats the, the, the and Holy crap. The nuance, the nuance, lots of the nuances. Nuance. Let's point out no. the nuance of every no. song. So the review oh, from, from That's the, all I'm going to talk like about it. Shit. Yes. Yes. That's all right. The, the life in hell, hell Jack. Children, it's nuance. Life in Hell. Here's the second track. What do you think? Um, again, you know, it's it's that's another thing that takes me back to uh, Rest in Peace because you got the first two tracks just kick your ass. It's a it's a really powerful song, and actually, I can't help but wonder if it's a little bit autobiographical for him because it's kind of a blistering attack on on you know someone <clears throat> who's kind of a mess. And I'm kind of like, oh wow, Dave, are you being Kind of on, are you being like opening up to us here a little bit, or are you like no, no, no? Or... He's blasting someone else, being self aware. <laughs> Tom, okay. we need we need some uh, serious input from uh, your side we of things. Context, after that. Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no nuance. So, there's no nuance. No nuances on very, this one. This is very like... little nuance. <laughs> but no, it's 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 a good thrashy. There's a little bit of a song. spoken word there. You, you dig that with Dave when he does that stuff? Well, that would not? be a nuance, wouldn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it works on the song when he does that. Yeah, it absolutely works. It, it adds the power. Um, okay. When he's done it, when it's failed for him in the past, it's kind of sapped away, and you kind of start to go like, "Yeah, I can't take this seriously anymore." But no, I think it really works yeah. on the song, and it's it's a it's a ballsy kind of really good. It's a great. Did you get the two. spy versus I, I, spy reference? Did I you love get that. that spy versus that. spy. That's awesome. Yeah. I did. Yeah. All right, Perrin. Uh, I'm Tom surprised more. It. I'm surprised more people aren't talking about this song. Because it's definitely top three on the record for me. It might even be number one. Like, again, every listen, it's a little different. But, you know, there's other songs people seem to be talking about more. I love this song. This is like everything I want in a Megadeth song. It, it's like, it's short, it's heavy, it's fast. Uh, it's just, you know, if there's anything that harkens back, you know, if there's people who need a Megadeth song that they can kind of relate to if they were an earlier Megadeth fan, a so uh, fan, I think this is the song. So... To me, this is the song that really, like, yes, you know, this is, you know, Jack spoke about how a lot of the more recent albums don't really speak to him. I'm a little like that, too, that I love The System Has Failed. Everything after that was kind of eh for me. I like Dystopia a lot. But this song just said to me, wow, I think this record's going to be something special. So I really, I really enjoyed uh, Life in Hell. Tom, this could have been off of Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good. It's fast. It's ferocious. Yeah, uh, you know it, it, the drumming is sick on this yeah. friggin'. Yeah, uh, it, what'd you it, think, it, Tom? What'd you think? I, I like it. I think there's one of my favorite tracks on the record, probably. You know, I mean, look, and I'm a guy who, I mean, basically everything between Countdown and Dystopia, I didn't like. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty critical on Megadeth records, man. And you know, it, especially the Dave solo period. You know, but I, I really like this again. It feels like a band. It feels like a band who really. And it's been a long time since I got shut up the phone. The hell's going on there, man? My phone <laughs> started freaking out. It like void. Apparently, it hurt me. Tom, you're supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> I know. What are you doing up, <laughs> asshole? It's 10 a.m. on a Saturday. But no, I, I, I think again. I think this is it's heavy. I, I, it's probably one of my favorite songs on the record. You know, it, it's funny. I hate to say it. It's kind of like a movie where they put all the good parts in the trailer and they kind of release the best shit before the record. I mean, because the songs that kind of got dropped, the singles, I was like, oh my God, this is fucking great. And yeah. then there's, yeah. you know, a, some, a little more mint stuff on the record, but I, I, again, I think, I think it's great. Yeah. Same here. Night Stalkers. We're not going to talk about it because I think everybody's talked about it to death. Right. Let's, and, and I think everybody can agree. It's a good track. It's a good, I track. just want to say, let's just give some about nuance. That, yeah. that, that talking about nuance, that's little kind of acoustic piece 
and then mm. the and then the breakdown of the bass that's amazing like before ice t does his spoken word thing which i think is really yeah. unnecessary but that, that, no, that, I love it, man. Ice T's uh, got the he's he's got the friggin'. I love ice. I just I don't man. But but he I just fits it's in what so leads well. up to it. I mean, it's what yeah. leads up to it that I find amazing. Like I said, I, you talk about All nuance, right. the acoustic right. in the bass. Yeah, yeah. Work. And I think Ice T's well, a nuance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I, I gotta say, everybody out there, do you agree with colors. the Ice T's rant? Colors, colors. I love body <laughs> count, man. I love. You don't know me, yeah. fool. You just own me. I love it. Well, okay. So Night Stalker. Yeah. Any Ice T commentary there, Jack? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, while well, he's he's worked with Chris Poland in the past, which he did a really killer track with him. I, I think I like Ice T a lot. I don't really think his part adds anything to the song. I was gonna say about this song, this is the best riff on the record, the main riff to this. Oh this my god, I think he brings it. You know, the same way Public Enemy brings uh, bring the noise to Anthrax's, you know, sort of the, the their cover of the uh, Public Enemy. That's the same thing that Ice T does to this song. If you ask me, yeah. just brings it. Yeah, I think he was underused, level. though. I guess. I mean, I love Ice T. Yeah. But if he, if you're gonna say he's a special guest on the track, don't just have him do a spoken him word him thing more. in the middle of the song. You know, you could have really utilized him more. I yeah, it, yeah. It's almost at the end. It's in the last yeah. minute and a half or so. Yeah. I thought it was a war was gonna break out when Ice T started talking. I don't know. That's how I feel. All right, Kevin saying Ice T goes legend. Jim is saying Ice T part is. Awesome. Gabriel saying body count have Dave Mustaine doing spoken word. That's true on the yep. last album. Dave Mustaine does. Which, an, a, which was also pretty word. unnecessary, but it was cool. Yeah. 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 All right. Here we go. Dogs of Chernobyl. For everybody, you know, uh, this is this is an interesting track. A lot of people are sort of mixed on this. Jack, what do you think? I think this is still, as I said earlier, you know, I really love the first four or five tracks, and this is one of them. I think this is song is, is really killer. This is again another one where the lyrics are kind of Odd, but you know, again, I, I dig it. I'll, I'll, I'll give this one a thumbs up, even though it's a little silly. I think he's he's singing from the perspective of being one of the mutant dogs. No, no, no. He's he's using the dog. The dogs were abandoned. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Well, metaphor. Well, yes, it's, it's a, a metaphor. Or a simile. It's a, it's a very nuanced. It's a <laughs> very new. A very nuanced <laughs> metaphor. It's a nuanced. It's, yeah, but Jack, maybe, you're, Jack, maybe you're just I not recognizing the nuance. It's a little uh, ham-fisted. It, it's sure. brilliant because there were articles about the animals that were left after the nuclear, uh, you know, Chernobyl disaster, right? The meltdown. Right. And he's using that as abandonment. So that's the song. Yeah. So to me, that's a lot of nuance happening right yeah. there. <laughs> a lot of metaphor and maybe and, and, even a simile. And, and see, this might be him getting a little personal because I know he had a lot of abandonment issues from his family stuff. This might actually be him slipping in some personal insight via that metaphor. Yeah. That so, very, so it's a pers that very perspective of Fido. Story. Yes. Uh, so, Jack, sure. I'll let you continue. Go ahead. Oh, but sure. Yeah, just musically, though, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty killer track. It, it's got the, the right pace. It sounds, it feels like old Megadeth. And actually, that's a word I probably should have used a little bit earlier. This, that's a, 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 for old this Megadeth? Album, is that it? It feels like uh, like more like a Megadeth record. And I think Tom even kind of saying this too. It feel it's really got a great Megadeth feel, and this track definitely does. And yeah, I, sh I shouldn't. I should. I've only listened to it like one and a half times. This particular song one and a half times, but it it blew me away both times. And uh, you know, so I, I'll, I'll hold off on the lyric commentary. But it's it feels a little ham fisted though. I mean, even if there's some great a metaphor going on there. Um, but anyway, my take is definitely thumbs up. This is definitely. I still feel like we're rolling. We're we're, we're rolling at at full speed with this track. We, we haven't really hit the the the, the rough the spot yet. Yeah, it's coming. The though. wall. It's coming. I can, can I say I'm just sitting there right now, picturing Dave Mustaine with fistfuls of ham, and I don't I don't get. The, I've never understood that expression. Why would somebody have a ham in their fists? Like, do you it's really like big. fucking ham? Like, it's, how how much do you I, like ham? Did just I think it's a rah. very Guys, I think it's a very <laughs> creative metaphor. I agree. You know, I agree. Right? I agree. In, in, in a sort of like a, this this animal kingdom disaster that happened after you know the all this fall, talk right? of metaphors <laughs> and nuance today, man. I'm but but you know that's show. the charm of Dave, right? Yeah. You know yeah. the dogs of Chernobyl. Like you wouldn't. Who would think of to write a title yeah. like that, right? And you know what? And before Perrin, you start getting into it, and I was very. I was trying to take this apart. This is like a waltz. So the verse is a waltz. So bum, 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 bum. If you really listen carefully, it's a three, four, maybe even a six, eight. So that's from a musical perspective. And if I'm wrong, please tell me. Perrin, go ahead. So when Jimmy got the advance of this a few weeks ago, I felt like this was the only song he was talking about. And then when yeah, I finally I heard it. it yesterday, I was like, dude, you've totally oversold this. Like, it's, it's really not <laughs> that good. But it, it's one of those, it's I, I, offline. I was talking to the guys about Iron Maiden's Sinjutsu, how you had to listen to that album and some of the songs a few times where you appreciated them. 
So this is a song that I'm appreciating more and more with every listen. And now I'm up to three, four, five listens, and I really like it. And, you know, it's easy in quotation marks to write a fast burner that goes really well. And sometimes it's easy to write kind of a ballad that everyone loves and puts their lighters up. But it's not easy to write a good mid-tempo song, which I, I kind of consider this more of a mid-tempo song. And I, I think they've captured that here. And I, I, I will say, I think this is Kiko's best guitar work on the album. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think, I think there's some really interesting things going on. <clears throat> even with, with Chernobyl being Russian-Ukrainian, I even feel like it's almost like ukulele at the start of the song. And even some of his guitar playing later kind of brings in almost kind of a Russian music, uh, or Eastern Orthodox influence into the playing. like whether he's channeling that or again, it's on purpose, I, I found that really interesting. So I think this is a song that will be an enduring song for them in a way like In My Darkest Hour is an enduring song. Like it's not the fastest and it's not the slowest, but it's it's kind of just really constructed in an interesting way. So this is this is the the one that takes the most digesting, but I think once you do that, it's very rewarding. Very well said. An estimated 900 stray dogs lived in the exclusion zone, many of them likely the descendants of dogs left behind the mass evacuation of residents in the aftermath of the 1986 nuclear disaster at Chernobyl. Tom? Very nuanced. Very nuanced. Very nuanced. Go ahead, Tom. What did you think of this song? What am I going to say? that you guys? I just said it all. I mean... All right. It's good. It's, it's good. I do. I love Kiko's guitar playing. There's a there's a there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of character. Kiko <laughs> brings that. I, again, it's kind of got that. Today's show is brought to you by the word nuance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, the Rust in Peace. It's kind of that's where they really came out. You, you know, on Rust in Peace with that really injecting that sort of ethnic flavor and the and I, I, I again I think there's a kind of the threads that go through this record. You know, and, and on this song are those kind of you know kiko kind of bringing those ethnic influences and yeah i mean i didn't i didn't put too much thought into the lyrics either way but musically i i think it's just i mean i read the title like that's a great fucking dave mustaine title and i didn't really dive into the lyrics or anything on you know but again it it's a good song and musically it's just fucking brilliant and again i i just thought wow that's a good dave mustaine concept and title you know it's clever good you know what and i was trying to tell Perrin this this is sort of uh, the growth of Megadeth. You know, this is like the next step of Megadeth. Yeah. You haven't heard this before in the past, even though it is familiar, but yeah. at the same time, it's out of the box. So they're going a little, they're organically growing. You know, they're, this is the next phase, we'll say. Yeah. It, right. took, it took like 10 records in between to grow to the next phase, which, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. I love it. I, to me, it's one of my favorite songs. Okay, here we go. Now, are we hitting the brick wall here, Jack? Yeah. You got Sacrifice. Well, now, see, actually, I just did Sacrifice as one of the good ones. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll be blunt. I'll be, to be completely honest. I only heard, I didn't get an advanced copy. I heard it for the first time yesterday. Okay. I can't pick, I can't play it on my mental iPod. I can't hear it in my head. So I need, so if you said, I'll oh, sing it, I, I can't. I, I don't remember, but I just like listed it as, okay, this is one of the good ones when I was taking little notes. So I feel like after this is when we hit the wall. Um, well, I don't want to say hit the wall because there's still some brilliant stuff later to, to come later but i felt sacrifice was part it, of it's that. where we hit the pothole yeah <laughs> that, that's a better metaphor yeah it's good crater. nuance good nuance there parent um but yeah <laughs> no I, I think uh sacrifice is still part of that initial rush of just how killer this record hit so so i'll just all i'll say is thumbs up because I, I can't speak anymore about yeah it, and, it, and, and there is a difference between listening to an album two weeks for two weeks versus two hours like tom okay Sure. <laughs> just well, I know, it doesn't sound like any of these guys listen to it any more than me. I started, I, you know, I, I started listening to it last night when you asked me, and I was, I had like a long drive, so I, yeah, I listened, I listened to it more than some of these guys oh, yeah, did. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, just poking fun, Tom. I know, I know, yeah. I know, I, I but, know. But, 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 but you know, it's funny. I had no, I sure as hell didn't rush Which out when it came out listen, yesterday and go. Well, you oh my listened God, to I the making of the album. See, there's a difference. And you were listening yeah. to sort of like the making of it. So you have another. Yeah, for, for two and a half years. Yeah. I mean, they they worked really hard and they hit some walls on this record. Man, it was a really I'll say this. I, I it made me happy just knowing what I know and 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 you know, seeing it come together the way it did. Because I know they had some struggles making this record and it wasn't coming together. And you know, you know, you know. Again, Mustaine went through his health thing right in the middle of it, and I'll, I'll say that it makes me happy as a Megadeth fan. Take all the politics and the bullshit and the personal situations out of the equation. As a Megadeth fan at my core, it's 
made me really happy to hear it and hear it come together as well as it did knowing the tribulations I went through trying to get it made and written, you know? Did you, did you like sacrifice? I, yeah, I did. Again, just like, you know, it's funny. I, I totally agree though, that this is where the record kind of starts to hit the wall. You know, I, I did, this was the last song that I really, really, really liked on the record besides well, I won't, I won't skip ahead, but no, I did. Yes. I did. Don't skip ahead. Parent sacrifice. Yeah. So look, I, I, I really think I'm thinking the same way as Jack and Tom, uh, particularly Jack. So I really felt the record started with four really strong songs. And we'll get to this later. I think it ends with some strong songs, but I think there's kind of this pothole crevice, whatever in the middle, where the Crater. material isn't as good. And I think it starts here, although I'll call this half a good song. Uh, musically, I, I like the riff and I, I like the music in the song. I think it's Dave's worst vocal performance on the album. I don't know if he had a cold that day or whatever. I, I know we talked about the way Dave sings before and it's just Dave being Dave, but I find this one particularly monotone and just no, you know, no nuance, the, no, no nuance in his voice <laughs> at any point. So music, great, poor vocal performance, which takes a good song down a notch in my mind. So it's not bad. But I think this is where the album does really start to get a little bit weaker than what we saw in the first four songs. All right. So this is my take on Sacrifice. And I think I know what the problem is. The verse is really good. The music is excellent. Everything is going off great. It's just that chorus. I think they change either a key or they go to a minor key and it throws the whole song off. And it sounds like this is not a memorable chorus. This just It just doesn't work, the chorus. And it kind of loses the whole song right there and then. That's the problem. So... I'm with you. I would put it like a seven out of 10 because the musicianship is so strong. That's why I would keep it as a seven out of 10. I love the verse, the way he sings it. I just do not like the chorus. It kind of throws me off. All right, Jack, Junkie. Probably the worst song on the album. Hated uh, it. I listened to this album. I did listen to it twice. So uh, the guys on like two, two full listens, you know, like I said. So unanimous. But, but uh, yeah, Junkie's the worst song on the album. Do you know like how it started? uh got a I super can't. collider kind of feel to it when it starts exactly <laughs> yeah you remember I'm, i don't know I'm the, I'm, i gotta i can't think of the intro to be honest all right, I, I all just right. so you're kind of that's how much you didn't like it you can't yeah. even think about it yeah I, I tuned it i mean tuned it out i just was like okay this is a fail this is uh this is this is dave kind of trying something in the, or maybe not trying I, th I feel like in the past dave's bad stuff is stuff where he just didn't put in the effort because when he does put in the effort you hear this guy works harder than anyone else when he's writing his best songs. You can hear yeah. just how much he put like a song like My Last Words. I mean, that riff is unbelievable. Like, this is a genius at work. And then you have songs where it's like, yeah, he just phoned it in. And yeah. It's just like, oh, crap, we need a new song. I got five yeah, We need minutes. another song. Yeah, we need yeah, yeah. we need to get this just over an hour or whatever. You know? yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's Junkie. Uh, not just Junkie. I feel like there's one or two others here. But Junkie's absolutely one of those ones. Like, All right, just hang out another one. Yeah, I Junkie. just like the the middle the middle of the album. I don't like. Uh, I th I agree. This is the worst track on the album. If sacrifice was the starting to go down the crevice, yeah. I think this has got the bottom of the crater. Uh, it, yeah, if uh, Jock said it perfectly, it, it just feels like okay, guys, we need one more song for the album. Okay, let me go back here. Let me write something really quick. They okay. call that filler, yeah. right? I mean, Dave Mustaine writing a song called Junkie, like how? Yeah, you know, how I, again? And it's probably about someone else. That's yeah. The, well, but but okay, still, whether it's about him or about someone well, else. Oh no, but that's what I'm saying. Is you that get right in three minutes, so, right? I mean, yeah, it feels exactly. like a song that was written in three minutes. You know, so yeah, just you know what. The album is actually a little long for me. I like that we're seeing a lot of albums this year that are like 45, 50 minutes and maybe nine, 10 songs. And like for me, I'd rather the album be one song shorter and this not be here. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather the album be like four songs shorter, to be honest. I yeah. mean, there's... Okay. So, so what'd you think, Tom? What'd you think of Junkie? I mean, who do you think I, it's about? I, I don't know, but. I don't you probably know. do know, but you're not saying. Go ahead. What do you think about no, no. Junkie? <laughs> no, I, I mean, every, everything they said, it just sounds like you was phoning it in, man. I, where I said they had some trouble writing and coming up with some shit and coming. I think this was one of those, man. I think this was just a fail. I, again, I'm not. I, I literally skipped over. I tried to listen to it three times. And every time I went through the album, I'm like, yeah, I didn't. The first time I tried to listen to it and every other time I just skipped it. You know, I mean, yeah. it doesn't hold your attention at all. It's the It was the first all. track on the album that didn't hold my attention. I would. I didn't want to say this when I initially reviewed it. It had a super collider kind of feel to it, yeah. You know, and that's kind of the parts of super collider that people weren't pleased with. 
I don't wait, hate wait, the song. Wait, there are parts of Super Collider that people weren't pleased with. Well, no, there's there's some you know there's some good tracks on Super Collider. I don't think it's a horrible album. Yeah. I just think that one of them was written by Thin Lizzy. So it's like, yeah. I'm just trying to say that uh, Junkie is not one of my favorites, but I don't hate it. Like I, yeah. I see I wrote I put Sacrifice and Junkie at seven out of ten because I think there's still a lot of good aspects to it. It's just very a little too quirky for me. Maybe I, I can call Sacrifice too, a seven. Too, 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 I wouldn't call too, Junkie a seven. Too much nuance. Too much nuance. <laughs> <laughs> too little nuance well, not enough. okay yeah not yeah. enough all Maybe right not the right nuance so now psychopath psychopathy uh if, however you pronounce it it's like a two minute spoken right here so we won't even get into it about it's it. like the hellion of spo- spoken it, words it's him but reading out of the actually. fucking medical journal over music <laughs> I, and I'm, cool. I'm so pissed because it was cool. It, it's kind of like the thing I do in the beginning of Vultures. And it's funny. Like, I'm, I was expecting it to go somewhere. I was so pissed when it ended. I'm like, really? I thought it was like going into this like epic fucking thing, like sweating bullets. And then it just ends. I'm like, fuck yeah. you, really? It, I was exactly pissed. the same. I, I like psychopathy, but then it goes into killing time, which yeah. I'm like, does nothing with yeah. it. Like, yeah. I, I just feel like, you know. Where's the happy ending? You know. Yeah, it was, it was, so it so my, Michael Sweet is weighing in, saying, "I haven't heard it yet. Should I take the time to listen?" Come Absolutely. on, Michael. You're friends with Dave Mustaine. Tell yeah. him to send you a copy. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Mike. It, I, it's worth anybody's yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Oh, here it comes. Is it better than the new Striper? I don't know if I should answer that question right now. <laughs> Man, Michael. Wait, did Michael send you the stream of the Striper? Did you hear the whole record? Because Michael said he was going to get you the stream. Guys, I'll tell you this. Send me the damn. I don't know if I should tell you guys this or not, but. Go ahead. Tell us. I gotta wait. I gotta wait. I think it's too soon. I think Michael might like get mad. Just, okay, so he sent you the stream. Is what you're saying. You got the record. I heard the album. Let's just say I heard okay, the album. Okay, because I'll the other day you did it, and Michael said I'm gonna say this preliminary to speaking. I so told Michael the exact least, words. I told Michael the, Michael's a man of his word because he got you the stream. I, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna just as as a sort of sneak peek. If the yellow and black attack and soldiers under command had a baby, this would be the album. Wow. Wow. Those right. are bold words. Right. Those are bold words. That's continue. what I think. That's exactly what I think. I told Mike, and he goes, Well, did you like it? I go, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I did so like it a lot. Is it as there heavy? Stri- Striper's gotten really heavy really recently. I don't know yeah. if people know. Well, that. I'm just saying that. That's all I'm saying for now. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll save the bigger review for later. But I'd, I'd rather talk about now. Striper. Can we just do yeah. that instead? Look at this. Look at Michael like, jumps on Michael and we're talking about Striper all of a sudden. Like, yeah. Show Jack. Show Jack. <laughs> Love Michael. Love Michael. Um, I was, say, I was gonna say, um, uh, Dawn Patrol is a, is a kind of the way I throw back with psychopathy. It's like Dawn Patrol is one of those songs. No, Dawn like, Patrol like has a purpose though. Dawn Patrol is fucking Dawn Patrol is just kind of show up Ellison's base. And I mean, I mean, psychopathy just sounds like an intro that just didn't go anywhere. Like, Dawn Patrol is its own like self contained thing. We'd go on tour and start our set with Dawn Patrol, it's its own song. Like, this didn't feel like its own song, this just felt like an intro that didn't go anywhere you know Listen, that's how i feel about tom patrol well, all right so so it goes into killing time right yes jack what'd you think of killing time that's where it leads into it's a segue to killing time right what'd well you, you know i gotta say when i looked at the track list i was like holy shit did they do the same cover that metallica did um when i saw that they had a song called killing time yeah again yeah. uh killing time what did i say i, I feel like um that song is really pretty weak until there's a, the final riff. The, the song kind of takes me. I'm, I'm just kind of droning. And then the final riff's like, this is a badass riff. Oh, it's over. See, so for I a feel- second, for a second, I got excited and thought they did a head B cover, but no. So uh, you kind of, you're, you're lukewarm on this. You're not really, yeah. Uh, yeah. That the final riff is killer. I wish he had taken that and based the song around that. The rest of the song is just. All right. Perrin, are we still going in that crater? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, we're in the we're full on in the crater right now. So I, I, I'd say the middle of the record is the crater because, uh, well, look, if we're saying that psychopathy was a cool intro that went nowhere, we're saying the nowhere is killing time. So, killing time. Yeah, for me, for me again, like the the bottom of the crater, the two songs I really didn't like uh, are are uh, Junkie and Killing Time. Right. I think, and I think those they start coming out of the crater, but I think that's Dimitri's saying I disagree with psychopathy. It's a good setup for killing time. And I would agree. I do like it as an intro. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to like the intro. The I just don't like the song. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like spoken word. What can I tell you? I, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a lo- I like Leonard Cohen. What can I tell you? All right. Uh, Tom, what'd you think? I mean, killing time. Yeah. It's, it's all right. It's all right. I mean, again, all right. we're, Sorry. we're cratered. I, I mean, I don't. <laughs> 
we're coming out of the crater as a spirit. Yeah, like I mean, we're, we're down. Out of the we're coming out of the crater. I mean, right as, as far as I'm concerned, we don't come out of the crater. We're both to stick our heads out of it on the next and, track. And police truck, but yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's good. I liked it. I kind of put it like a, like a seven out of eight out of ten. Yeah, you know, it's, and, I and I agree with Perrin. We're coming out of the crater now, yeah. and uh, it's it's. I mean, is this about Elfson? That's what I was asking Perrin. I go, is this about Elfson? I don't know. No, like maybe, absolutely. You know. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's not at all. Absolutely fucking not. I, I mean, thought I'd he's ask. A, he's a bass player, man. The songs are the same, and I mean, look. It, it, again, sonically, it would have been a little different with Elfson. That's probably the only fucking difference. You know what I mean? DeGiorgio is a very very capable bass player yeah i mean look i when i heard tom it, tom here's the lyric when you start moving your lips i know that you're lying so don't tell me you need me you're killing my time stop saying you're grateful because you're not you're so hateful i make sure that i'm ready to go can, can, I, can, I, can i can i tell you that, yeah yes, oh, oh yeah i'm not gonna comment on that but yeah you know, it's funny that thought did actually cross my mind um crossed all our minds you yeah. know, when, when you said uh and, and knowing he didn't have any of these lyrics written before. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it's so funny that that lyric though, that fucking, it reminded me of that stupid Megan Trainer song. And that kind of killed it for me too. You know what I'm talking about? All know. about that bass. No, that stupid. I see your lips are moving. It's oh. the same fucking <laughs> thing. It's like, literally, I heard that. Like, we got everything on this show today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the new striper. We got the new striper. Ah, we, can we, can we talk there. about striper? I just want to talk about striper. We'll talk about striper after. All right, soldier on. <laughs> soldier under command on. So soldier on. Soldier. Jack, what'd you think of soldier on? You know, you've heard it. Now, this is a song that you've been sitting with for a while. Uh, Here's that military it. fetishism we were talking about. Well, yes, watching military mankind fetishism. destroy itself. I mean, it's kind of telling, right? As today yeah. of uh, you know, of today's society, right? This was the weakest of the singles, but it's still a good song. This is not the crater. I feel like this is a, a temporary lift out of the crater. We're popping a wheelie now. That's what you're We're saying. Popping a wheelie. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my BMX, uh, my huffy bike, <laughs> jumping out of the, the crater. Yeah, it's it's a good riff. It's a good, you know, if this had been the lead one, I would have been less excited. You know, I, I won't jump ahead because, you know, I don't want to get scolded by Jimmy. But um, <laughs> if this had been the very first single that they'd released, I would have been like, eh. It, you know, I, I wouldn't have been that interested, but 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 still, it's a good song. I, I would I would call this one a seven out of ten. I mean, yeah, it's just seven out of ten. My God, Perrin, what'd you think, a Soldier on? I mean, we, we've talked about this. Before. Yes, staying on the crater theme. So, if Sacrifice was taking us into the crater, this is taking us out of the crater. So, Soldier on, it's good. It's not great. You know, it was the third single, and I remember I think we were doing a show at the time, and I kind of said, okay, the first two singles really blew me away. And this one was kind of good, but it wasn't on that same plane. It was just like, okay, guys, what else are you going to show me? So it's it's a good, solid song. It's a great riff, but we've kind of heard it before. But again, if you like early Megadeth, I think this connects nicely with with early Megadeth. So good song. Yeah, seven, seven and a half is about right. I think. Jeez, guys, you oh, guys. Like, to me, Soldier On has got to be one eight. of their best Light tracks. Brings home a seven, this seven is like Rust in Peace era we're talking. Time. This could have fit on Rust in Peace easily. Okay, Tom, what do you think? Soldier on. I, I, again, I think it's good. I think it's, again, sort of classic Megadeth, you know. But and people want to want some classic, too. They not only want the little stuff, the nuances, but they, they want some yeah. classic. Metal metal. <laughs> they want some, some of the classic nuance, you know, that That's Nick Menza, Marty Friedman nuance. Shh. We need to have, like, somebody hit a, hit a bell every time somebody says I that. I don't know. To me, I think it's so catchy. I could lie in bed and I'm thinking, I got to soldier on. And I mean, it's also anthemic in a sense, right? People could use it as a motivator, you know, every time they're sort of down in life, you know, I've got a soldier on. All right, here we go. Here's a, here's a controversial one. Jack, Celebutant. Um, this song is killer, actually. I feel like this is the sleeper track on the album. It's so killer. It's such a heavy song. It's a great mosh pit song. I'm old. I don't go in mosh pits anymore, but it's a great mosh pit song. And this is one I did think. He didn't write a song about Dave Ellison's little tryst, did he? Like, I, I had to kind of think, like, is, is, did he, he, didn't, he didn't probably didn't go there. I, I mean, I'm sure he didn't. This does feel like it's absolutely about a real person, not him. Well, well like, I mean, uh, I don't think so. I think it's a general because he talks about models and actors. Yeah, so I don't I mean, to me, I, I, I think it's more I think it's about, about like the, the Kardashians yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was yeah, so, so, you know, Jack, starts, stop stirring the pot, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I stop guarantee. spreading rumors. I, I guarantee. That's for exclusive for Metal Asylum. <laughs> I, I guarantee somewhere in this album, there's some lyrics written about Allison. You just got to figure out what one's there. And it's right. not this. 
No, right. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't really think, like, I'm not trying to, like, get a scoop here, but no, I, <laughs> it crossed my mind listening to this song, but I think you're right. I think it's more of a general attack on the su- yeah, superficial. Yeah. I'm not trying to give you shit either there, Jack. I'm just <laughs> trying to, <laughs> just busting your balls. <laughs> no, I pretty, no, it's all good. This is this song is killer. This is one I will go back to again a lot, and this is one I think will be a sleeper hit. I don't think this will be one that they'll, they'll drag out live and that a lot of people talk about, but I think this is one that, this one's for me, so thank you, Dave. So are, right. you the, are you the celeb you taunt? Is that what you're right, saying? I'll, is it about I'll, you? Is it about I'll Jack? Come, is it us about four Madeline? models on online here. Okay, Paris, right, what'd you think? I'll, I'll come clean. Yeah, I, I think Jack and I are seeing the record pretty similarly because for me here, we're fully out of the crater. So this is, we're out of the crater. I was out but, of the crater in the last song. No, but well, Jimmy, you've been out of the crater the whole here, time. <laughs> but the record starts off slamming, and then I think there's a lot of mid tempo kind of stuff. But then the song before and this one, it gets really heavy again. So. I kind of like where we go with this. It's an interesting song. Uh, this was also definitely one of my favorites on the record. So uh, top three or four on the record for me, I agree. We probably won't see it live, but it'll probably will be a song like years from now. We'll be saying, like if they do bring it out live a few years from now as a kind of surprise deep cut, we'll all be really happy with that. So uh, good tune, fully out of the crater, good song. Tom? I, 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 man, you guys just, have me stuck in the middle now i'm just trying to you know i don't know if i want to agree with jimmy or if i want to agree with those guys I, but no I, I i i dig it again it's heavy you know again i i feel like this is out of the crater coming out of the crater we sure like this crater metaphor <laughs> just yes yeah, it's, like <laughs> it's a very new, it's a very nuanced metaphor um, Man, this, i hope this guy's watching i hope really hope this guy's watching you just you're blasting <laughs> him on the nuances no no i i, I <laughs> <laughs> Confession, it was me. I wrote that yeah. article. Well, guys, there's a lot of records that have craters, right? I mean, seriously, how oh, many have you heard that start and end well, but the middle is kind of eh? And that's right. kind of when we yeah. sum this up. That's how many I've albums heard. have you heard that just don't have a crater? I can't yeah, remember hey, the last album that better just... to have a crater than just a flat line, right? So, yeah. like, you know. yeah, I'll, I'll take, I'll take yeah. it. I'll to take me, it. to me, this this celebutant's like a thrasher. Could have been on Dystopia, if you ask me. Yeah. It definitely could have been on the last album. You know, it, it, it would sit well there. I mean, the topic's a little off topic for Dave, but you know what? That's what makes Dave Dave, you know? Yeah. Talking about the Kardashians. All right, here we go. Um, now, there has been, this This song has completely been polarizing the Megadeth community. I'm sure if I did a poll on this, on Mission to Mars, people would say, 50% would say this is the, the greatest track they've ever written, and the other 50%, this is the most cringy, horrible track Megadeth has ever done jack <laughs> oh then obviously mission, they missed a bunch are of are we out of the crater and blasting yeah. off or are we just like exploding in space and falling to pieces what's going on here jack uh no the last song was absolutely a wheelie uh this song is mission terrible. to mars not the last one no yeah. mission that's what i'm saying that this is right back in the crater this song is terrible uh this song actually this is the first time i started thinking of 90s megadeth and actually i like i mean i do like 90s megadeth um but this song is, is just terrible. It's it's just a mis, it's a mistake. Um, I, what did I say? I think uh, <laughs> no, no, they, they know it's there, Jack. It's not a mistake. <laughs> tell us how you really feel, Jack. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, and it's 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 not the worst on the record. But yeah, it's just it doesn't. I mean, I, I applaud Dave for goofing around and trying something different. Like like it's not. But it's just, this is a fail. This is escape from right light. Why do you hate it so much? It just, it's, it's also tonally, it's such a, I mean, and, and sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes, you know, you want a tonal shift to snap you out of it and go like, wait a minute, we just did something weird here, but it's just, it just feels silly. Um, and lyrically, it's silly. It, it's, it's, it's silly. It's, it's silly. Uh, mechanics. And, Let's go back to mechanics, please. Go ahead. <laughs> that's a really nuanced song. But, about, yeah, but about, you, uh, about, about making drive shafts crank. And about, making, and yeah, cool. that's nuanced. Um, if, funny not, enough, I, like, you know, there's a line that says, you know, uh, they speak about rust. I don't even think anything actually rusts on on Mars. Well, actually, it there's says there's rest no ox- there's no oxygen on yeah, Mars. Yeah, it refers but, to rust in peace. But I think yeah. that's kind of rust, meaning the sort of the the the, the texture of uh, the planet. But go ahead. Yeah, right. I think actually, yeah, you said it's a spoken word. It's not, I don't think it's even Dave. Someone's saying like, I'll just let it rest in peace uh, about yeah, yeah, something yeah. that think it's abandoned out in space. But things don't rest. But anyways, yeah. But yeah, this Most is one I'll, I'll not go back to well, and, and listen to again and again. All right. Okay, Jack hates it. Go ahead, Perrin. <laughs> Well, I think this is the first time Jack and I kind of disagree. Like we've kind of been pretty close, but I, I like this. Like did the Dave actually exhibit a bit of a sense of humor on one of his records? Because uh, 
I don't know if I've heard that since Hello Me Meet the, Meet the Real Me or something like that. I, I find this is, I think it's kind of fun and it's quirky and I feel it's almost like if the uh, the actors in the Hangar 18 video did a reunion 20 years later, like Beverly Hills 90. To me, this is like $6 million dollar man intro. You know, this the $6 is the million reunion. dollar man. It's, it's, it's funny. It's like, I like that the little breakdown where like the uh, the aliens are talking to the supermodels or whatever it is. Like, I don't know. I, I found it kind of funny. And aliens talking to like, supermodels. Yeah. What on earth are you talking? Are we talking about the same yeah, song? There's, there's a funny part. <laughs> there's a funny breakdown in the song. And Oh, you mean when he, when he talks up, when he's sort of like blasting off and hey ladies. And yeah, just, yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I I like that. And now, now it's just is, weird. Is, is Ice T playing no, the part of the alien? I, I, no, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> you know, uncredited. I don't know. But no, I guess maybe it's it would be better if it ended the album if it was an extra track or something. Yeah, I agree. It not kind of have middle. an extra track kind of feel. Like it's it's the album's very serious, and then you have this, and it goes back to being serious. So maybe that's the problem. I but standalone. If we're just talking about the song, not how it's flows on the album i like the song I, th I find it kind of funny and interesting all right tom he's all gonna right. sneeze Are you gonna sneeze no, I'm, I'm, I'm yawning because it's okay. 10 in the morning I you're sneeze right and in. it's 10 in the morning and this is rock and roll you don't do rock and roll at 10 in the morning on a saturday <laughs> and i i mean honestly i'm indifferent i i bad and i didn't really pay much attention to it one way or the other i chuckled and went ha ha but i agree it should have been probably like at the end of, i mean whatever it's a weird goofy little fucking interlude in the middle of the record or the middle Goofy. end of the record eh, whatever look guys th i've said this to parent i go this is my favorite song on the album really yeah no, i would i would definitely first of all I'm, I'm i'm a space i'm a space you know nut you know when it comes to stuff like this to me yeah. it reminds me of steve austin and the six million dollar man when you know i thought you meant, stone, so cold. I thought you meant <laughs> stone cold steve austin <laughs> you know to me this song you know is is dave mustaine yeah quirky yeah. uh witty storytelling yeah. and the chorus is super catchy you know i could see this uh, as a music video well, and you, you know what it made me think of it made me think of nick menzik that i've been kind of i me and me and poland started working on liar again on his book and i was talking to gumby this week who was john goodwin who was one of megadeth's you know roadies and uh, and him and nick were in bands for a long time and again so kind of the, the it kind of just made me think of nick and the whole rust in peace alien hanger thing well i, I think this is, a, this is actually I, a prequel so see earth has been vaporized the earth is no like i guess what happens is they're blasting off to mars he goes to mars at least from what i can hear and then when he's in mars he, he sees another ship there right and he thinks there's some sort of alien life but he's not sure and then he goes, Mission Control, we got to leave right now. Mission Control's, no, you right. need three minutes to take off. And he goes, we don't have three minutes. So like the aliens are coming after him. And then he goes, we need to land to Earth. And he goes, Earth has been vaporized. So go to Jupiter. And and that's kind of where the signal gets You've really been off. listening to this closely. This is my favorite song. God, what damn. Are you like, you're, you're like really been getting This is my favorite wow. song. What are you talking about, man? Wow. So that's the story. So Earth was, wow. that's why I posted Earth has been vaporized. Because yeah, we were wondering in the story. Yeah, yeah. So in the story, Earth has been vaporized and he has to land on Jupiter, but Mission Control goes out and Dave's going, over, over. That's how it ends. So it's a great story. Well, so it's Earth... a sequel. Go ahead, That'd be a prequel. No, it's okay. It's a sequel to the final countdown. Saying, yes. Uh, it's a prequel to the final countdown, I think. <laughs> or Hangar, uh, you know, uh, 18, right? Uh, no, I'm going to stick with the final countdown. I like that better. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back last We're song. Leaving last... together. <laughs> we'll be back. What'd you guys uh, think? I like we'll be back. Last song. We'll be back. This yeah. is well, this isn't I guess I listened to a different version, but uh because I thought I'd know there were more. This is a, well, of course, this is the first song probably most of us heard. Yeah. And this is a song that made me snap to attention. This made me go, okay, Dave is back, Megadeth is back. Uh just even though the verse is exactly the same verse as Black Friday. Of That's all right. Friday. That's all but, right, though. Yeah, he can copy himself. He can plagiarize himself. That's allowed. Yeah. Um, That's um, what copies so, allowed, yes. Yeah, and it, it really works. The chorus is actually, if I really want to break it down, the chorus is a little silly, but it doesn't matter. The, the rest of the song is just it's killer. It's guitar solos, tempo. Dave, um, you know, this is what, this is Dave Mustaine being Dave Mustaine at his best. So I, I think 
I don't know if this is my favorite song on the album, but it's it's it's, it's a killer track. It, it it just it rocks. Tom, we'll be back. You've heard it now. You've had a lot of time to listen. Oh to yeah, that, 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 again, like like Jack said, you know, it, it's the one that came out and got got my attention. And again, to me, it's very P cells kind of modernized that out. Yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. Classic classic Megadeth. All right, Baron. I, we've talked about this. You yeah. know, we'll be I mean, look, honestly, uh, exactly like Jack said, uh, you know, when we first heard it after not hearing from the band for a while, it did really say to us that Megadeth was back. It's, I think, it's the kind of Megadeth song that we all like and brings us back. So, uh, good track, good track to end. I guess the regular record because then there's bonus tracks. But mm-hmm. you know, we'll be back. I get is always a good way to kind of end a record. You know, this isn't the end. We'll be back. Okay, and now we have the two bonus tracks. I'm not sure if you guys heard them or not. Mine only, but... mine only has one. Mine only has Police Truck. Yeah, know. Police Truck, police truck is old... brilliant. Police it is. And I, I remember... That cover, choosing that as a cover was a brilliant choice of cover. Yeah, well, and I, and I knew, you know, we had the conversation that they were talking about doing that a year and a half ago because me and Dave did Holiday in Cambodia on no cover. Yeah. You know, so it was funny that they were doing a... a they, they were doing... They decided after the fact to do police truck, but they had actually talked about maybe doing a holiday in Cambodia too, after we'd talked about doing it. And then, so we ended up doing holiday in Cambodia and they ended up doing police trucks. So I thought that was funny, but no, I really loved it, man. I, I, yeah, that, song, that song always takes me back to Tony Hawk pro stater. And- I, I just love when a band though does a cover that kind of makes sense for them, yeah. but it's kind of off the beaten path a little bit. You know I mean? Cold sweat. I like their version of it, but it's kind of like, obvious and been done a million times right so i it's like also band, vocals yeah right? it's, I, I like it's the, the vocals of the dead kennedys you know he's actually doing a better job and, and the cadence right? this the cadence of the song works like i don't know I, I i really it's it's not a throwaway actually i really yeah. enjoy it quite a bit I mean, then like, we have then we have the cover of oh jack sorry go ahead i was just gonna say i felt like it actually megadeth's version actually had a little bit of a vault beat feel to it just the way it, it kind of sped along and it, i don't know I, that first thing i thought of they took the song and made it better if you ask me they, that that's kind of my impressions because yeah. you know 1980 dead kennedys came out with it the vocals are very rough you know like all punk bands back then and he kind of sort of finessed it a little bit and still made it aggressive you know um all right this planet's on fire this is a sammy hagar song for me, you know, you take something from Sammy Hagar and you make it better because Dave Mustaine's singing on it now and uh, it sounds a lot more nastier. So, I'm, you know, uh, yeah. Jack, what'd you think? Um, yeah, it works. And actually, I, you know, I didn't look at it. So I was just listening. I was like, wait a minute, is that Sammy Hagar on a Megadeth album? Like I heard his his voice. I, I actually didn't recognize the song, to be completely honest. So mm-hmm. don't, don't don't punch my metal card. But uh, it's okay. yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, <laughs> it's not like a core album track, but it is a fun extra bonus track so yeah, yeah I, I have no no qualms with this song Perrin? unnecessary i would have been happy if the album ended a police truck you know like uh I, look you know me i like sammy a lot you know i, I love a lot of what sammy Why the reverse and the Remember way he writes the opposite of that i know but yeah so I, I just didn't think i think sammy should be sammy and megadeth and mustaine should be megadeth and mustaine and where i you know whereas i'm saying hey megadeth doing a, a cover of, of a dead kennedy song is kind of cool and quirky I don't really find this cool and quirky. I find it kind of just eh. like, I don't know. Again, in the name of a, a shorter, more concise album, this doesn't, didn't need to be there for me. Now on the see Billy Marshall says, did you know that Megadeth did a cover of priests? Don't know which song it's supposed to be on Amazon event. You see, that's where they're going to get into trouble. Like Dave trying to do Halford, right? That's the problem. So <laughs> anyway, you're doing dead do Kennedys. Halford. It works because you're upping the vocals here, but now we're yeah. talking about downgrading. Tom, what'd you think about the plan? Hey, for, for, for the record, I did both on the same album, and it was hell. I, di- I didn't even hear the same Hager cover. It wasn't on the version I listened to. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's a but, bonus, but yeah. T- tell you what, if they did, if they did like you know pound cake or something, then I then then we'll talk. <laughs> Do some Van Hagar, and then we'll talk. Then I'll then I'll then you'll have my ear. On your dreams. I, right, I mean, guys. how 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 nuanced is the same Hagar cover though? That's the real <laughs> question. It's good. It, it takes the song that was a little more slicker and makes it more, let's call it dirtier, right? And more angrier and more Mustaine like. But Sam is on Yeah, Sam is on They're sort of trading off the vocals. Like there's vocal trade offs. So, um, you know, one verse here, one verse. There. And if it makes you feel better, Jack, I wouldn't have known it was a fucking Sammy Hagar song either, probably. <laughs> so, uh, 
cool. Yeah, it's one of Sammy's Still better there. songs, and I'm the yeah, guy yeah. who doesn't like Sammy, so. Okay. All right, I think that's about it, guys. I think we're done. I think after about... We need ratings, man. We need we need final oh, yeah, ratings. Well, I mean, it's hard to rate it for you guys. Okay, so rate it, Jack. What'd you think? Out of 10, out of the box. Yeah, after two listens, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I feel like this is actually, to me, this is the... I'll, I'll be concise. Uh, I feel like this is the best Megadeth record since Rest in Peace. Um, and I... I do like some of the albums after Rest in Peace, but I feel like this is the best one. This is the first one that's had songs that have really spoken to me since Cryptic Writings, because I think mean, Cryptic Writings is a you know a hit or miss record, but that song has a that album has a couple of just really time. How the fuck do you not like Dystopia? <laughs> Doesn't speak to me, man. I about halfway through, I start to drift. I start to say like, isn't there a new? I'm like or? Jack, man. Like I like Dystopia. It's no, just, they're, they're, I, they're, I can't put it on today. I just I can't put it on today. I just. I, I don't know. There's it doesn't speak to me. Yeah, I uh, liked it at the time, and I got bored of it fast. No, I'm sure. Yeah, I have a feeling this will be the same. I don't know. I don't really spend a lot of time listening to Megadeth these days, to be honest. So, yeah. Parent. Yesterday, I would have given it a seven. Now, after multiple listens, I'll give it an eight. Uh, uh, tomorrow nine. No, no, because, <laughs> because of the crevice, there will be no nine. So it's, a, no it's an eight because there's a crevice. It's a crater. Uh, it's and, a crater, and I will say Aaron. Crater. Sorry, not just a crevice. A crater. <laughs> crater is much bigger than a crevice. I mean, it was a uh, pothole. The pothole. Yeah, the big pothole. And uh, I, I think it's my favorite since the system has failed. So the system has failed is my favorite next generation Megadeth album. Mm-hmm. This comes in second, and Dystopia gets the bronze medal now. So I would have had Dystopia second. So now this knocks Dystopia down to third in the re. In, well, it's not a reunion era, but the new era of Megadeth. But I wouldn't go as far to say it's the best since. But I, is there a new era? Because ever literally almost every record's had a different band. I mean, like this well, is I like, know, but it's just kind of like there was a pause. I guess more time wise, timeline wise, there was a pause, and then since the system has failed, I feel like albums have been coming out as fast and furious, although with different members. But yeah. I like the fact that it does feel like it's the most band like they've yeah. been in a very long time. And look, I like the system has failed and it's pretty much a Dave's solo record. So many different yeah. people but, but, but Chris Poland is on it. Yeah. Well, there you That's go. Why, I mean, Chris is on it's great. That's right. Okay, guys, the last question. And I want everybody to oh, talk. I, to rate it. I don't get to rate it. But... Okay, go go ahead and rate it. You've heard it like, I don't know, half a, half a time. <laughs> Dude, I've heard it more than fucking Jack has. Fuck you. <laughs> you keep giving me shit, Jack said. I listened to it twice. I've listened to it like four times now. All right, four times. Go after four times. I, I know anyway. all the nuance. I, I, <laughs> I, I give it a solid. I mean, like I'd say a good eight. I, I mean, again, right. you know, as far as, you know, Rust in Peace, Countdown, dyst- Dystopia. I'm still going to put my money on Dystopia. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, but I, this is, you know, coming hard and heavy right behind us. Dyst- again, I like Dirk. I really like Dirk. So, I mean, I might, it might creep up on Dystopia if I end up listening to it some more. We'll see. But, I mean, dude, I, again, Dirk and Kiko, again, it's a band. It really feels like a band making a record, which I really like, even, you know, with a different bass player. You know what I mean? But, feels like feels like a band making a record it feels like kiko and dirk and dave really yeah. gelled and and you know when i saw him live man and even with with lomenzo like i could tell i, I saw mistaken had a smile on his face and you could tell it's like that's what he needed he needed a guy in his band who wasn't going to give him shit who would just play parts and again i feel like mistaken's happy in his element the other guys really support him well and you know maybe lomenzo will get to play on the next record we'll see you know, I'm going to say what my rating was two weeks ago, and it's the same as today. I like this album even more after two weeks. It's somewhere between an eight and a nine out of 10. So it's somewhere there, but time will tell where it, but definitely not less than an eight out of 10, you know? And, and if I had to rank it in the catalog, I go rust in peace, peace cells, uh, killing is my business, at least for me. And then I probably put it, around either that or countdown sort of be either tied or depending you know around there so like in the top five there wow wow that's after two three weeks of listening to it right so it's really a a good well-rounded record look every album they have is always like one or two week songs we got to be you know be honest yeah right so uh that's it guys this is the last question you gotta yeah yes or no Parent has Megadeth and Dave Mustaine run out of gas. No, no. All right. You you no, literally no, just no, said no this proof. is your like top five record, so obviously not. Yeah. No proof. Yeah. Of, no well, proof no, I said that. He didn't say that. Did I you? know. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. All right, stop confusing us. <laughs> I would I would have it I would probably have it just outside my top five, but there's okay, no that, that's there, there's good. enough good material here to say they're not running out of gas. All right. Ja- <laughs> and we're not talking about jalapeno here. <laughs> Jack, have they run out of gas? I didn't even listen to the album. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. I only no, listen to like a quarter well, of a time. Actually, after one listen, you could feel if the energy is yeah. still there. The yeah, no, no. There. Like I said, two two full listens, and I, I and I feel like yes, this is a they have not run out of gas. This, I feel like they've recharged actually, uh, and yeah. this is top five Megadeth for me, and bottom of the top five for sure. I'm I, I'm pretty close to you, Jimmy. Although I P cells is my my peak for Megadeth, but uh, yeah, I feel like this would probably be number five. I I think they're I'm excited for new Megadeth, even though you know I know. We keep talking about uh, Dirk, but I know James Lomenzo is really the future of, of Ace and Megadeth. Well, wow. as much as as much as we can ever know with Megadeth. But, uh... You know what? I got to tell you, after two weeks, I'll listen to this. So the first, so two weeks ago, I put it on because I had to listen to it to review it, right? And now I'm listening to the album because I want to listen to it. That, yeah. that's, there's a big difference there. Tom, of Megadeth, run out of gas. No, Metallica did. <laughs> That's another show. <laughs> it is. Can we have that? Like, it's so funny. It's the though, Megadeth. Too. It's Metallica. Have they run out of gas? Show slash Striper's new album. Show. Yeah, yeah. No. No. I, I don't think so at all. I think again. I think the batteries are recharged, and especially as hard as it was for them to make this record, having to hear them come through it this powerful, making a record that all of you guys are saying top five. I mean, that's 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 powerful stuff. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, and there I mean, was this big crater right in the middle too. So I mean, to have a top five in a big hey, crater. they're they're like sixty. The same's like sixty some years old. If you can make a record that's eighty percent brilliant, fucking good for you. I mean, exactly. I mean, most bands don't even come close these days. Most older bands making new records don't even come close to anything they would have made in their prime. You know, I, I think Megadeth is really. You know, I think that's an accomplishment. I think that's really. You know, I mean, I think that's a pretty fucking impressive feat. Guys, this is how much of a space fiend that I am. If you look at the the, the Metal Voice logo, there's not stars and space and the sort of Earth, planet Earth. So that's kind of why I love Mission to Mars so much. All right, guys. See you guys next time. Thank you for participating. See you next Saturday at 5 in the morning. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it even earlier for you, Tom. Yeah, you like. please. I'm going to go listen to the new King's X because people need to pay attention to a great band. So I'm going to go listen to the new King's X right now. I'm going to go put on Striper right after this. I'm, I'm right going to go not listen to music at all. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go back to You're going back to bed. Maybe. Blind Guardian. That's what I haven't given that Hey, before. Blind Guardian. Look at here. I yeah. love it. Great album. I think yeah. it's one of their best, but no one seems to be talking about it. It's wild. Very well, you are. You're, we're talking about it right now. Yeah, yeah, pick it up. Pick it up. Did you like it, Jack? So far, so good. I haven't given it enough of a listen. I had to listen to this Megadeth album. So I'm can, kidding, can you yeah. can you tell me about every individual song? Real quick, <laughs> I will, please. and I'll give you a rating afterwards. And if they run out of gas, they have not run out of gas. But how much nuance does it have? A lot. A lot. <laughs> oh, they're German, man. There's no nuance there. <laughs> <laughs> Straightforward rock and roll, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. All right.